So welcome back, uh, we will continue our discussion on alternative and greener materials to plastic which uh, uh, we started looking at in this particular week. So, this is the third video for the week 7 and in this video we will continue what we were doing in the previous video as well looking at the greener plastic products. So, these plastic products mostly bio based and you saw some examples earlier. So, let us uh, look at uh, some more uh, uh, examples. Now, uh, one of the things we are looking at towards the end of the last video was uh, plas uh, plastics, plastic products or replaced replacement for plastic products from uh, uh, using the raw material or bag ash which is essentially coming from sugarcane. Sugarcane India is a uh, in we do produce quite a bit of sugarcane in India. There are several other countries uh, like Brazil, Vietnam, China or Thailand they also have a lot of sugarcane industry. So, in these uh, in these countries there have been some push in terms of uh, using this bag as which is uh, essentially a waste product and try to make uh, a single use uh, uh, material which is a plastic uh, which we use for plastic those plastic plates, plastic cutleries. So, replace those with material uh, with uh, plates made from bag as and this is uh, and these are environmental friendly because they are biodegradable. So, it can degrade. So, when we say environmental friendly we need to also try to, try to quantify that environmental friendliness and we will talk about that uh, in terms of uh, later in this particular week. So, uh, what is what is bag ash? This is essentially is coming from the sugar can it is a residual fiber uh, once the sugar cane juice has been used up. So, it can be it is used uh, uh, for uh, so, it is uh, once the sugar cane juice has been used up. So, it is uh, whatever is the left product uh, it is around uh, 40 to 60 percent of cellulose, 20 to 30 percent of hemicellulose and about uh, 20 percent of lignin. So, we have 20 percent lignin, 40 to 60 percent cellulose, 20 to 60, 20 percent hemicellulose. So, that is what uh, we are looking at. <coughs> and, um, of course, it will be found in countries that produces a particularly high amount of sugar uh, which does include India as well. And uh, it is although it is called a byproduct, but many people see it as a waste product because in the past it was mainly used as a fuel uh, for the production plants and that was also many places it is just dumped uh, into the atmosphere rather than being beneficially reused. So, this uh, uh, kind of helps in terms of uh, um, so, in terms of uh, like uh, the use of this material for making a alternative to plastic and which essentially coming out to be environmental friendly. So, it is a byproduct of sugar production does not require additional cultivation area. So, it is uh, un unlike other uh, bio fuels and uh, bio based uh, resource where if you are producing those resource. So, you are you are changing the land use here you are not changing the land use you are producing sugar cane and you are producing uh, uh, sugar or other products from the sugar cane, but whatever is the residual you are trying to use it for uh, uh, for this uh, like a single use uh, a replacement for single use plastic products. So, it is production it is also used for building materials, packaging materials, disposable tableware. The paper industry is, is replacing wood fiber with sugar cane fiber to produce napkins, toilet papers and cardboard. So, that is also happening. So, since there is no additional cultivation area required, so we are not impacting any land use changes. So, we are not impacting any forest. So, that is the benefit of uh, going for uh, this particular uh, raw material coming from sugar cane. So, it is uh, they have been found to be stronger than plastic. So, that is also a good uh, 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 can the things to know because uh, in in terms of uh, if you look at uh, many startups are finding alternatives. So this bag as the fibrous remains left behind after extracting sugar cane juice can be used to make disposable cutleries and containers. There's a company called Papco which uh, you see all these product over here, and uh, this product has been found to be even. Uh, of even uh, stronger than plastic in many cases. So, that is really a encouraging uh, finding because we can use this product, we can use this waste, uh, waste material and uh, make uh, single used uh, disposable cutleries and containers uh, which is essentially biodegradable. Of course, we need to manage uh, these waste as well properly. Uh, 
uh, once they are discarded, but uh, whenever this product is discarded that needs to be managed properly because when anything biodegradable means it has the it will, it will have methane potential. Methane is a greenhouse gas. So, we need to uh, make sure it is managed properly the gas is collected, uh, we are not uh, contributing to climate change. So, it is not that we are solving one problem, but we are creating the other problem. So, that is always uh, uh, should, uh, should uh, looked into and we will talk about some of those discussion later in this uh, class as well. So, what how they are made uh, it is uh, from a steam boiler air compressor you will have uh, sugar cane pulp and that goes to hydraulic pulping, pulp mixing, forming machine, shaping machine, edge cutting, UV sterilization, then you have the final product which is used for, uh, uh, for uh, making those uh, single use uh, uh, containers. So, the in terms of uh, uh, their steps, if you look at one by one, uh, we start from pulping. Pulping as you know, pulping uh, is also done for uh, paper, uh, pulping uh, which you are is soaping the pulp vapor board and put into hydraulic pulper. So, that is what uh, it is all about. So, here rather than using uh, uh, like a uh, fibers from trees, we have the fibers coming from this sugar cane. So, it will be put into the hydraulic pulper after pulping the pulp will go into the mixture tank where all water and oil additives are added. Then it goes to the pulp supply tub for forming machine, vacuum dewatering and forming. So, that is uh, the next step. So, in forming is the one of the key process in the production line. It is uh, process is quantitative pulp supply and then you have uh, vacuum dewatering. Uh, with advanced technology to eliminate holes and even thickness during production, uh, so the semi finished product move to the drying mold for solidity. So, you have pulping then forming as you saw in the previous, uh, 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 previous slide in terms of uh, uh, the layout of the process. So, uh, very similar to what kind of you see for any paper based product as well. Then there is a shaping and drying which uh, steam is used for heat drying and uh, 70 percent if you use uh, heat drying compared to electrical energy you are saving 70 percent of the uh, energy will be saved emitting the hygiene requirement for food packaging. So, qualified production rate is up to 99 percent. So, that is uh, it uh, is used uh, in the then we have after shaping and drying it has to be cut and sterilized because as you know it will be used for food uh, uh, food usage. So, it has to be really uh, free from any pathogens bacteria. So, product taken out from shaper will be moved to edge cutting machine where the extra edge is trimmed. UV sterilization is applied to make sure production meets a hygiene requirement and then finally, product is packed and stored. So, that is how uh, the and it is not say if, if you look at that it is not it is nothing uh, anything is spatial over here. It is only that rather than using uh, the fibers from other sources now we are focusing using the fibers from the sugarcane waste which is also called bagasse. So, we are taking from the bagasse we are uh, extracting those fibers and using it uh, for making this product. And since it is coming from a uh, material like a bio based material it is a biodegradable material and uh, it uh, and it can be used for uh, uh, those uh, uh, like a for uh, after say after its end of life potentially can be used for uh, energy generation as well. So, it is uh, either as bio based energy or it can be used for thermal energy too. So, thermal waste to energy plants can use it as well because since uh, uh, these will have uh, relatively higher calorific value as well as long as it is kept, it's kept dry. So, uh, spatial characteristics uh, they are very stable, uh, they are sturdy, they are not very flexible though. So, it is uh, you cannot give a lot of shapes to it, but it is not it says it is stable, it is sturdy and it has good thermal property and it can it has a it can withstand the temperature of uh, minus 25 to 220 degree centigrade. So, which is uh, uh, kind of much uh, much beyond what a typical temperature range will be for uh, human uh, uh, settlement. So, uh, even for very very cold climate inside temperature is less than minus 12 is uh, above minus 25. 
outside it may be less but that's only for a few days few weeks maybe in the year uh, but uh, other but even in those weathers the since the temperature is controlled and you are pretty much above 0 degree centigrade all the time so then uh, you have uh, it, uh, it is a water repellent it's a uh, grease proof uh, it's suitable for hot and very oil and greasy dishes it's completely biodegradable and compostable so that really helps in terms of uh, uh, going for the greener alternatives as we as we said in the beginning of this particular video that in this section in this particular uh, uh, module the focus will be looking at the greener alternatives to plastic and this could be one alternative to plastic. So, may, how many of these uh, initially are costly as I said uh, I think in the previous video as well things are it starts with costly, but as the market picks up. So, that is why in my view although uh, many people may not agree with me, but uh, in my it is that is my in my personal opinion the government should help these kind of industries and that is what I have seen uh, it happening in the western world. Although western world we say they are the capitalist society they are not socialist, but many times I feel the way the policies are being done in even in US or in, uh, or in Australia or New Zealand or Canada for example. Uh, I found them to be a bit, uh, since I have stayed there for quite some time. So, I have followed their policies a bit as well. So, I found them to be kind of more socialist today than what we are in India in many many cases. So, especially from when we come when we have our interaction with the industry. So, industry many times need little bit of hand holding by the government. And uh, when I say hand holding it is uh, to provide them with required support, so that they can uh, they can uh, withstand especially the initial hiccups. Because say for example, this uh, uh, if I set up a company or if you set up a company uh, using this uh, bag ass product initially since you will have lot of infrastructure to, to be to be in place, there are a lot of research involved in it to come up with all these products. So, the, the cost of this will most likely be, be higher sometimes much substantially higher than the alternate the plastic product which it is planning to replace. So, there the government role needs to come in play where uh, government needs to kind of incentivize some some lives to consumer to buy this product and at the same time give subsidy to this company. So, that the products are at cheaper relatively a competitive price should be there. So, and that could be in the form of tax credit providing land or uh, giving some electricity uh, bill rebate or whatever, uh, but uh, there has to be some sort of uh, mechanism and the western world has lot of mechanisms like that. Uh, so, and they also fund research uh, like a, for example, in US they have a concept called a small business innovative research and that SBIR it is a short, short form is SBIR and that is uh, 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 industry can put 1 dollar and uh, the research funder uh, they put 3 dollars up there. So, it is a kind of in 25,000 dollar you can have a 100,000 dollar project and that has to be totally focused on industry uh, something which improves the industrial process something which improves the job uh, prospect. So, you can create more jobs. So, it has to be totally applied uh, not basic. Uh, but at the same time uh, you will get uh, uh, some things coming out of that. In Indian contest unfortunately, still we are so much stuck in that uh, whenever you go for any funding they will say oh what is the science here. See science is already there, <laughs> but uh, it is the application uh, as an engineer we are also we have to also look at the application. Uh, we should uh, focus, we should move beyond that. There have this, we need basic science research, I am not doubting that, but we also need a lot of applied uh, research and it is not only the consulting part, it is the research uh, funding also needs to be there, because sometimes consulting does not really help, because consulting requires quick solution and where uh, this kind of many times this kind of work takes time. So, it is a bit more like a research funding rather than a consulting funding. So, that was a bit uh, side track, but just wanted to uh, talk about that, because uh, to put things in perspective. So, if you look at some of the products coming out of it lots of containers different types of containers uh, uh, can be made from uh, bag ass products as you can see. Uh, then there are some others uh, uh, products are also out there this one is uh, seaweed based water pouch, uh, where this in the, the water will be in the pouch and you can uh, uh, it is a it is kind of a bubble design uh, it uh, looks like a water bubble. So, it is uh, and 
it, plastic bottles, uh, uh, why the plastic bottles are being used because it is easy to transport water in there, but of course, it takes energy to make those bottles and when you are done with the drink, it takes more energy to unmake the bottles like uh, to treat to, to uh, treat those plastic waste. So, as plastics will not fully degrade on their own, now there is uh, some startups coming up where they say let us skip the plastic bottles entirely. It is called, uh, it has made a capsule called OHO. Uh, for transporting water that is not only biodegradable, it is eatable. So, you can eat that. OHO is a bubble design by skipping, uh, skipping rock slab that enriches drinking water with an edible membrane made from a natural seaweed extract. So, you have a natural seaweed extract and if you do not feel like eating it, the flexible bubble like packaging biodegrades in just 4 to 6 weeks. So, even if you put it in a uh, biodegradable uh, container for uh, composting or aerobic digestion, it will uh, go there. And the membrane can be flavored or colored, it can also be used for other liquids such as soft drinks, sprites, spritz or cosmetics. So, there are a lot of other applications are also there. So, this is uh, the goal for these kind of thing is that we will eliminate the plastic bottle. So, this is kind of alternative to plastic you can consume it uh, uh, that, uh, but at the same uh, but if you do not want to, you can put it in uh, your uh, wet waste container as well, because this can be composted or uh, anaerobic digested. So, there are a uh, lot of examples are there, we have picked few, uh, which uh, we thought uh, is uh, more uh, kind of relevant and uh, kind of making a lot of news, a uh, lot of meat, lot of attention, but there are several others out there as well, which I would strongly encourage you to. Uh, to look at those, we are also put, we are putting up some other examples in, as a online that uh, reading material, but uh, so as I said other than these slides, you will have the some more reading materials to look at, but uh, make sure you also look at some of uh, this Google search, go, do some Google searches, do some YouTube searches and look for alternatives where and you will find some cool stuff. If you find, if you really feel something is uh, uh, really kind of uh, interesting, cool and a lot of promising. Uh, put that link in the discussion forum and it will help uh, all of us including me to learn about that. So, this in terms of production of uh, OHO, how it is done, uh, you have uh, uh, dissolved sodium alginate in water. So, you take sodium alginate, dissolve it in water, dissolve calcium lactate in a separate bowl, transfer uh, them uh, together in a, in a bath, uh, in a uh, sodium alginate to calcium lactate bath. You mix the solution and uh, steer the transfer water balls to water uh, water balls to water bowl. So you just uh, make it in a water bowl and then you fill uh, water in there. So, so that's uh, that's another uh, that's one uh, how, how it is done. So it's not that uh, uh, like this doesn't seems to be too uh, too technical too difficult to do that. And uh, this already you see it uh, uh, at least for a trial basis it is already out there. Now, there is another uh, alternatives like we use lot of containers at our homes from uh, uh, which is made out of plastic whether you are talking about uh, your shower uh, dispenser. So, rather than using uh, uh, soaps uh, like a uh, solid soap, these days there is also a concept of using liquid soap like liquid, uh, your body wash or shampoos and other stuff. And uh, of course, uh, shampoo is always a liquid, but body washes we used to use like a uh, different type of soap. But these days there are liquid soaps available. If you go to many many hotels, you see that the liquid soaps are there. And then liquid soaps are also coming with a dispenser now, so that you that becomes a little bit easier uh, for reduces the wastage. And those uh, dispensers, very similar to what you see over here, is mostly uh, made of plastic. So, but there are uh, alternatives coming in terms of uh, safe paper bottle. So, first ever shower shape paper bottle is uh, in the market. So, L'Oreal uh, they have uh, have just it, they have launched launched an uh, 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 eco beauty range uh, seed phytonutrients. The product themselves sounds lovely, made from 93 to 100 percent natural ingredients, cruelty free. Uh, probate free etcetera, but the packaging is where the real, real innovation is. So, made by Ecologic that is uh, uh, the outer card is recycled, uh, recyclable, compostable, glue free and water resistant. 
The inner liner is made with recyclable plastic and uses 65 percent less material than regular plastic bottle. So, we cannot really able to eliminate the 100 percent plastic because since the inner layer where you will have the contact of liquid uh, with uh, the surface, if you have just the pure paper, the paper will uh, you will have uh, paper will get soggy. Uh, its structural integrity will get compromised in the in contact with water, but uh, that's why we need a liner. And that liner is there in many places. Even the coffee cups. Say if you go to Nescafe and other places, when you take the coffee and you take it in a paper cup, it's not 100% paper. Uh, there is a liner of plastic in there as well inside, so that you are uh, you can hold on to liquid there. Otherwise, you will not be able to hold on to liquid because liquid will uh, uh, make it make your uh, uh, like a cup uh, not usable, uh, make it soggy, His strength will go and you will lose your uh, coffee or, or tea in between while you are uh, consuming it. So, that is that's not going to work. So, that is why we have a liner like a thin liner of plastic there. Okay. And uh, there are some uh, paper bottle uh, like again the paper bottle that is the same thing it will be paper bottle by ecologic brand and uh, they are uh, they are popular in number of categories can be used for wine, pet food, protein powders, laundry detergent to name a few. It uh, consists uh, of molded paper pulp outer cell made from recycled corrugated and old newspaper that can be recycled up to 7 times. The inner film which is the polyethylene pouch with a spout has been until now the inner component comes with uh, it is a it is a plastic and inner component that comes in contact with the product with a liquid uh, powder or other. When compared with a rigid plastic container the pouch reduces plastic use dramatically. So, we are making some uh, effort we are making some benefit, but uh, it is still not 100 percent plastic free and uh, and because the uh, this uh, cells which are there can be nested the pouch can be transported flat to an end user. So, you can uh, so even the transportation cost can go down. So, one truck uh, truck load of packaging material equals 9 truck load of rigid plastic container. So, you are reducing uh, the transportation cost. So, uh, in terms of inner pouch uh, what they are it, they are trying to put a very thin extrusion blow molded liner that is fully recyclable made of 80 percent post consumer HDPE requires 60 percent less plastic than traditional sample bottle. But as, uh, and then they do not have the side flange, there is the elimination of glue, uh, interlocking patterns to bind the two cells together and uh, that is uh, that is again uh, helps in terms of uh, coming up with a environmental friendly material. So, there are a lot of uh, uh, I would say in, in, okay, ben, lot of uh, innovations coming in into this uh, area where uh, you see that uh, uh, many newer products are coming out, many greener products are coming out. Another example, this is a stone paper and plastic. Uh, this is uh, uh, Etiquetten Baker's a stone paper consists of 80 percent limestone and 20 percent recycled polyethylene. Uh, this combination makes a 100 percent ecological product that can be used for several purposes uh, from posters, flyers and to bags, hang labels, pot covers. Uh, it is a substitute for polypropylene uh, that is what uh, because it is a water UV and tear uh, more than paper resistance. On top of that it is also writable. So, even when it is wet. So, you can write on it the paper can be printed with thickness between 100 and 400 microns. So, you can have different quality paper as well. So, that is uh, uh, so be because of this issues related to plastics. Uh, so, initially what, what happened? So, if you look at the industry the way it has evolved uh, initially we moved pretty much many products from non plastic to plastic. We started using plastic for those products. Then we realized that plastic is actually uh, not good uh, in terms of long term environmental issues. It does not degrade, it becomes it chokes our storm water system, it is floating on many of the surface water and uh, it uh, also it is getting into the sea impacting our sea life, uh, impacting several species. So, then we realized that this is not the way to go. So, we made a mistake by using plastic very very uh, like I would say in a huge way uh, one of probably the use of plastic uh, I think it is the most uh, kind of you can say that in from a from an economical point of view uh, plastic has done phenomenal over last 3, 4, 5 decade. 
but from an environmental point of view as more and more plastic waste is coming into the ocean the issues are becoming more and more grimmer more and more challenging to handle those so there is uh, but uh, so that is the reason why there is a push to look for greener material uh, better alternatives in terms of environmental performance. So, that is what we are talking about uh, in this particular video. So, for the stone paper how they are make uh, it is a it is environmental friendly uh, entire production is from cradle to cradle principle uh, in contrast. Now, what is to cradle to cradle? Earlier, we, uh, you, may, you may have heard uh, talk, we talk about cradle to grave or cradle to gate. Cradle to grave is when you start for any product from the very beginning to all the way to the end that is your cradle to grave. Cradle to gate is many times the companies will make an argument that I do have no control on how the prod my product is being used after uh, I, a product is being used or disposed after I have sold it. So, I do not have control on that part. So, that becomes cradle to gate. So, we have to stop the LCA right there which is a calculation to find out what is the environmental footprint. So, and then the third option uh, when uh, many times people talk about is gate to gate as well. So, within the process if you have certain modification that becomes gate to gate the other things before and after upstream and downstream remains the same. So, uh, in terms of uh, now cradle to cradle. Uh, is uh, where you are talking about the recycling, reusing and bringing that material back into the uh, into the uh, chain. So, that becomes your cradle to cradle. So, that is uh, the whole concept uh, of, uh, uh, of this circular economy which we will talk about in the next video in next week s video. Uh, so, cradle to cradle there is even a book uh, titled cradle to cradle which talks about all these basic principles which came I think in late 90s when the book was first published. Now, this concept has become very popular and you see many documents, many reports, many, many writings done on circular economy and cradle to cradle concept. So, uh, if you look at uh, uh, it and the, in the production of regular paper, production of a stone paper does not require water cellulose acid or bleach. So, that no cellulose means no cutting of trees. Uh, CO2 emissions are 67 percent lower in production of a stone paper than in production of cellulose paper. So, there are uh, so you can uh, see the benefit which is coming out of it with all the innovation that is coming into the into the picture. So, these are some of the application of stone paper products uh, pretty, pretty much all the things that you can do from a paper product uh, different type of containers as straws uh, plates cups and all that which is uh, we kind of need uh, for uh, any any uh, for our usage uh, in uh, different uh, different usage in homes and even as a community level. So, uh, that is on uh, the stone paper part uh, which is essentially focused on uh, plastic as well as paper. Next uh, we have uh, is palm leaf product which is could be a al uh, perfect alternative to plastic as well. So, there is another company called Biopack which is uh, environmental packaging specialist. They, they were looking at uh, uh, they increases the range of palm leaf products and uh, this offers a 10 percent discount. Uh, this range is aimed at the street food retailers who are looking for something a bit different. So, here uh, the Mark uh, Brigden which is who is a technical director at Biopack said our palm leaf products are suitable for most food both hot and cold. So, you can use it for food they use for many mobile caterers and street food traders who are looking for a bit different packaging. The fact that they are eco friendly and compost in lit and in around 12 weeks time also reduces the level of impact. Uh, so, it is a palm leaves uh, seeds which is a bio pack uses for the production provide valuable employment for a small a small village community and their harvesting. So, so, we are looking. So, there are variety of uh, alternative sources which are being looked into once uh, we saw all the issues of uh, uh, plastic waste management. So, you can say from the palm leaf you can make uh, different containers as you can see over here on our right on top and uh, that is uh, kind of gives uh, uh, like a newer type of material coming out which we can use to uh, it not. Uh, uh, replace the plastic. So, that will help in uh, replacing the plastic. So, uh, in terms of alternatives from palm leaves uh, they have two there were two young women from Berlin they have developed an interesting alternative that can be easily thrown onto compost after sopping and can be used in an alternative way. The two students came up with uh, leaves of an uh, 
uh, areca plum and which is grown on the grown on plantains. So, as you can see there are uh, different types of plates, spoons, forks and uh, some other bowl containers and all that is also there. So, uh, let us stop here and then we will continue on our discussion on this uh, uh, looking at uh, greener material and towards the end of uh, the video this week we will also look at uh, uh, the impact. Uh, the how to calculate the impact. So, when we talk about we are lessening the environmental impact, how can we quantify that? We will have a quick discussion on that as well. So, with this uh, uh, we are finished the third uh, video of week 7. Again uh, as usual I keep on reminding you uh, go over the lecture material in time, uh, make sure you uh, uh, do your quizzes on time because uh, you should take in fact all the quiz although I think you are allowed to miss maybe one or maybe I, I do not remember right now, but uh, you are allowed to miss maybe one or two quiz uh, because it says based off certain number, uh, but uh, again the more you take better it is it gives you good practice and uh, if you should uh, those of you who have registered for the exam again all the best and uh, I hope that all of you should have registered for the exam because. Uh, it, it would be interesting. Once you have registered, you should take the exam and get the certificate because otherwise uh, putting all these effort and not getting the certificate uh, does not really make sense. Okay, so, let us uh, close this video here and we will continue our discussion from this point in the next video. Thank you.